dungeons and dragons. And junk drawer. Hey everyone. What is up, my dudes? We're back. And ladies. And dudes. Dudes is for ladies and dudes, dude. I'm a dude. I'm gonna, you're a dude. Say. We're all dudes. Yeah, well, no, exactly. She's a dude. We're all dudes. Hey. How about you don't correct me, white boy? <laughs> and also, that goes against your argument, so... I Ooh. mean, I'm just trying to help him get the I'm a dude song from Keenan and Kel, right? I'm sorry. Sure. Good burger. Whatever, Good burger. Mike. It's called a cover. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Dungeons and Dragons and Junk Drawer. We are back with a brand new episode, and we are going to start our shoutouts with Mike Spillane, what you got, buddy? Oh, shit. Um, I don't have any water to plug this week. Uh, <laughs> Zephyr Hills. That's something. Uh, That's a place. Any... Yeah, it is. It is. And there, there's also a spring. Um, Fuller Springs or die. I got nothing. Uh, it's been a rough couple weeks. So uh, follow us on Instagram at the Junk Drawer Show. Um, and then... Uh, Hopefully, uh, we're going to have some other additional content coming out for you soon. So just be on the lookout for our YouTube channel. Um, and we also are going to be starting to post some art from people not named Carlos. So be on the lookout for that as well. Haven't like posted it yet, art. but I'm probably going to uh, post some additional fan art uh, later this week. Sweet. Yeet. Up next, we have Josh Delgado. Hey. It's me. What's up? Yeah. Uh, What's I'm going gonna, gonna to have a shout out. I won't shout out water. I don't want to blow them up too much. Uh, but I'm going to shout out uh, Sultan Newman Group real estate people because they helped me find a dope ass house. Also a shout out to houses. I have one now. Um, <laughs> I'm not in it yet, but over the next month, this background will change. And uh, hopefully the internet won't dip too much, but we will find out. And uh, as always, let's say it together. On three, two, one. Fuck, fuck you, Donovan. Donovan. That's right. Fuck Shit. you, Donovan. Since 1996. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Donovan. Donovan. Since 1996. Uh, up next, we have Carlos. What you got for us, buddy? That's me. That is you. Um, I don't really have much of shout outs. I mean, I shout out Random Encounters every week. So you guys can check them out at Random Encounter Productions or Random Encounter PROD on Twitch. Um, you can also check out our Redbubble account, and you'll see links on Instagram and down below. Um, and I'm going to give a shout-out to my amazing husband, because he puts up with me, even though I do impulsive things like shave my head without telling him and then um, <laughs> breaking my big toe with a water bottle. So, yeah, that's fine. But the thank you, Drew. You didn't Love you. Us? I dropped the water bottle on my toe, and my big toe is broken. Oh, oh, Story boy. told. <laughs> why, did, why did you miss? By context clues, I, I I figured it out. I just it had a carabiner on it, and I went to clip it on my belt loop, and I missed the belt loop, and it fell, and it crushed my toe on his toe. It's, on his big it's toe. fine. I'll send you a it picture later. It was like, yeah, it was a big toe. It's. I'll send you for the picture later. I'm not sending y'all a picture later. You don't want to see my feet, or do you? Only fans. Hmm. Maybe I can make money off of it. Back to you, Pat. This is my last episode. Uh, I'll miss all of you. Um, <laughs> just wait. Let's, let's just keep it going with the terrible, terrible things. Justin, do whatever stupid thing you're going to do. This is the first time you've addressed me as Justin, and yeah. I don't like it. It was disrespectful. <laughs> Great. I'm going to make this worse for you. Okay. Well, as Dice Daddy, I'd like to uh, shout out, first and foremost, Roll20. His name is Justin. It, not in this span. Not in this realm, sir. Um, <clears throat> Roll20, uh, really great uh, tool we've been utilizing since December. Uh, if you are, and you should, be uh, practicing safe social distancing uh, with your friends, Roll20 is a great option for that. Have a great marketplace. I have purchased many things on said marketplace. Uh, what are those people, you may ask? Uh, just only Mythic Portal games, Printable Heroes, Kev's Lounge, the incomparable David Hemingway. Uh, I also wanted to shout out uh, someone that we shouted out last week, which is uh, Carlos's friend, Zer Jester Artishop. 
at Threadless, you can see a bunch of cool like class and uh, DM specific T-shirts. Uh, and of course, I would like to actually uh, shout out HalloweenCostumes.com. Uh, HalloweenCostumes.com has a wide array of different kind of costumes. October is coming up. I personally have found uh, a cute little yellow, red, sombreroed mustache number that has uh, on top of the sombrero a certain logo and under it another logo that says Salsa Picante uh, for $50. So go to HalloweenCostumes.com and search Tapatio Man costume and you will see the picture I'm looking at. <laughs> It is, in fact, a real website. I double-checked. And it's a real costume. I can't. Olay. Oh, back to you. Asshole. <laughs> Shithead. Poopy face. So, I have a room available for rent, if anyone... Uh, yeah, in a year, dipshit. Can't uh, break that lease. I would like to yes. start out by thanking my lovely wife for allowing me to play Imagination with you guys every week. She's wonderful and amazing, and I appreciate her. I would also like to shout out Corinne, who is the individual we will be putting out some art for. She did an adorable uh, depiction of our four main individual murder hobos. Um, it's super cute. It's really, really cute. I'm very excited for you guys to see it. It looks straight out of Winnie the Pooh. It does look straight out of the Winnie the Pooh, and I fucking Me love too. it. I'm yeah. all, I'm totally here for it. It's great. Uh, and last but certainly not least, I would like to shout out our number one sponsor uh, from Josh. He told me tonight. I'm sorry, we didn't start off with this. Bella Def, uh, Dolphins Bathwater. That's a new sponsor of ours. So um, drink the flavor. Dude, you're getting in on it with us. I love it. <laughs> and also, we're not murder hobos. <laughs> Yet. Uh, there's still time. I mean, the justice system's fucked, so it's probably fucked in this one. Too, right? <laughs> I don't know. Dice Daddy. With is it? all of that being said, <laughs> Dice Daddy, whenever you're ready. Oh, thank you. I peed a little. Mm. Um, <clears throat> the last time we were all together... Um, we had been suffering from the repercussions of being drunk on the boat. Uh, Thok and, uh, I almost said Rufio, Thok and Donner had a little bit of a conversation. It was a little, they didn't even have a conversation. No, there was no interaction whatsoever as Thok eventually just kind of cold-shouldered Donner. Uh, there was a conversation between Dremel, Alder, and uh, Donner in regard to what they were going to do with Thok, when they were going to uh, reveal Thok's true identity to uh, the captain of the ship. And uh, Paul paid Dremel another visit. Um, <clears throat> eventually, as the evening kind of came and, and took uh, during one of the dress rehearsals for one of the shows, Thok, uh, wearing his hat, uh, attended the show very drunkenly after drinking all day. Uh, before the captain kind of brushed past his head and uh, knocked off his hat of disguise, thus revealing Thok on his own terms. Oh, no, Josh, you're gone. Um, okay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> and so we kind of left it at that, where the uh, show kind of came to an abrupt halt, and uh, our heroes were in the ballroom where Captain Creed had uh, left as the ballroom, the, the ballroom. Yes. As the three of you are currently kind of reeling back from the realization of Captain Creed. Now knowing what's going on, she's very, she was very terse. Uh, Dremel, if you remember, she said that perhaps you all should uh, discuss. Uh, she was going to discuss with you guys in the morning. But uh, you all should discuss as a unit, and you should be in your own room tonight. So we will take it from there. Captain Creed has just left the ballroom as Donner, you're kind of standing up. Uh, if I recall, you were trying to block her from doing her thing. So you're kind of awkwardly standing. Dremel and Alder, you are currently seated, uh, just kind of like looking at the table. And Thok... You don't know why everyone's so tense and upset. You're just doing you, baby. As you know now, so everything's cool. 
No, everything's so, not cool. If you can't read a room, pretty... she's very upset. I think well, it's pretty far from cool, actually. You know, I think you guys are looking at this uh, a little half, uh, half full. It could have been worse. She could have thrown us off the ship right now. So... I think that more than anything, we actually have Dremel to thank for that, considering she's kind of he's kind of gotten into her good graces. So thank you. Oh, um, do you, do you and think all, all Dremel's your... gotten into a good grace. I don't think that's what it is at all. I I agree um, with you, but Dremel's out here with us, so I don't necessarily know if that's what is keeping us on the boat. Well, right well now, not what's... our good graces. Mm-hmm. Like you know what work. might have kept us in it, so. Uh, sorry about that, by the way, Drim. I hope that that can be repaired. Yeah. Yep, yeah, me too. I'm just going to sit just... here and chew on my stick. By the by, just out of curiosity, uh, is she your, is she your, your type? You, you mentioned before that someone wasn't your type, but there's... Like yeah, I I don't I don't know, man. Now, now's not the time. Let's let's figure out what we're trying to do here with Thok and his newly discovered persona. She's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, That's your... was, she's a bitch. Oh. I mean, some people like them when they're mean. Yeah, but always. It's just a type. Hey, I mean, she's not always mean, but she's oh. always mean. Oh. Oh. Hey, but, hi. Oh, hi, hey, hey, look, hi. it's me, Donna. Um, can we? We're gonna take you back to the room, get you a little sobered up, maybe get. Oh, you we're not there already. No, uh, the the show is over. I thought we were in the room. <laughs> Do you nope. know what our room looks like? <laughs> Are you drunk okay. or blind now? It's the rest. Maybe he's got that drunk When you minus. drink, things look better. What are you what drinking? Are you... Well, that's what this is. The... What? Bloody Maria's. Bloody Maria's, that's what it was. I only had like one or two dozen. Yeah. yeah, that seems about right. All right, let's get to the room. We got to yeah, talk let's... some shit out. Let's go there. Yeah. Okay, give me a second. I'm trying to stand up. And I, I just oh, pick God. him up. I, I don't even... Oh, shit. Yeah, I just grab him forcefully. I'm not dealing with shit right now. Okay. So you're able to kind of scoop him up under, uh, put his arm around your shoulders, and thought you're very surprised. Dremel is able to hold your weight very well. You're strong. Yeah, that's called, why they call me Big Muscle Mountain Boy. I thought it was Big Brain Boy. Uh, someone can dumb. have multiple names. You'd know that if you kept your ruse up. Ruse? What the hell's a ruse? Oh my god, shut the fuck up. I think it's a fruit. Does it taste good? I don't know. We're not hungry. No, we're not. I cast Command at second level on the two drunk people talking. and I just Oh, the it. other one you can't see. Oh, Mine is that Manu? Is- yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I thought there was someone else at the table coming with us. No, it was Manu. Oh, then I, I just Manu cast command. just com- talking to Thok. Okay, I cast command at first level on Thok, and I just say quiet. What's that? Uh, wisdom? Uh, let me look. It is. Yep, 16 wisdom. Uh, roll that at disadvantage for me. I figured. So that's a natural... Seven plus nine, so six, sixteen. He <laughs> Oh shit! Yes. I, I rolled I roll a fifteen and a seven. Wow. And I have a plus nine <laughs> for my wisdom save. Wait, so you got sixteen? I got yeah. sixteen. Don't you have to get above the saving throw? It's meets it, beats it. Oh, okay, okay. Damn it. <laughs> but oh. me being drunk. What do you say? Walk? You no, say I said quiet. 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 Oh, me being drunk, I would still do it. I'd be like, okay. Well, when Dremel gives you the command to be quiet, you actually feel like, because you did pass the wisdom save, but you do feel your tongue freeze up. 
but it relaxes and you're, you have full control of your, your, uh, communication skills. However, there is a really weird aftertaste that you're just kind of fixated on. Thus being quiet. <laughs> uh, so you the, just see him like on our way out. I'm gonna try and uh, see if I can get Val's attention. Uh, Val went backstage the minute that Thok's uh, hat fell off. Got it. Val and Brock both just did. I'm gonna off. see. Uh, then when I leave, I'm gonna go to her room and knock on the door. I'm not gonna go right back to our room. Okay. So as you guys get to the second level, Donner kind of uh, branches off real quick and goes to towards where uh, Valdana's room is. So you knock and quietly the door kind of opens and she's like uh, basically checking to see who it is and sees that it's you. And she goes, blink twice if you're in danger and my cousin is right next to you. Hi, Donna. How are you today? Would you like to come in? Oh, my God, Val. Please just let me in. Okay. And you hear the the door close, and then you hear, like, a chain kind of move and slide, and she opens the uh, the door. And she's in her kind of, like, her casual wear now. Uh, and you see her, and she's like, so, closes the door. <clears throat> How fucked are we? <sighs> um, well... She punched your friend in the face very hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was there for that. And she smited him. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, no, I I saw that. Um, Also smited him with the actual knuckles. Yeah, no, I was standing. Perfect. Um, So, that's good that she didn't go for the other hand. Um, Minor wins, okay. Minor wins. Uh, It doesn't seem that we're off course to the Isle of Storms yet. Um, I mean, we'll have to take her at her word and say that we will discuss this in the morning. Usually that means going to her quarters, which is not fun when you are summoned in that regard. Okay. So you might want to figure that out. Uh, I mean, would... Do you want me to come with you and figure it out with your friends, or is this boy time? Uh, I don't know if it's if it's boy time, but I think between the three of us um, and a sober thok, we can think of something. I don't want to drag you into this in case it gets bad. I don't want to tarnish your relationship or kind of drag it through the mud if we can avoid it i'm kind of already in this i know i know but if we don't if we don't have to bring you in further i wouldn't i'd like to keep it that way it's very sweet of you and she kind of looks and she goes quite honestly i've done worse so (laughs) she's forgiven me before maybe um maybe she'll just see this through at least if anything, she might throw your friends overboard, but she might keep you because I need you. As tempting as an offer as that is, uh, I've kind of um, hitched my horse to their wagon. So if they go overboard, I'm going to go in after them. Okay, I will make sure to relay that. Uh, Also, if you could, if you're going to talk to her before we do, um, maybe I could get... Maybe I could talk to her first. Before me? No, before the group comes in and talks. Because I feel like we're going to try and smooth things over and... Maybe it would be better if it was just one-on-one at first. Uh, I will try. (laughs) I appreciate it. She kind of looks at you and she goes, well, I'll be up here if you need anything, so. You know where we are if you need anything. And she kind of looks at you and she goes, yeah. And so, and she kind of opens the door, breaks eye contact with you and just kind of 
I'll just I'll kind of like bow and just say goodnight Valdonna and she kind of smirks and she goes goodnight Donna and then I'll walk softly closes the door to so the room. what are the three of you doing while Donner is talking to Val are you guys staying in the hallway or are you guys going straight to the room I'm being carried <laughs> well, we're going to keep walking to the room <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll like try and make sure that I get the the key from Donna uh, on our way to the room, but so that way we could just keep going. Okay. So uh, you get back into the aquatic room, and you see that the everything has been changed as far as like the linens and the towels. There are fresh towels everywhere. Basically, while you guys were out, and Drummel, this is the first time you're seeing the shit show. It's incredibly tacky. There are tacky themed wallpaper like bubbles to make it appear that you're underwater. There is a uh, kind of a blue flame that's giving the illusion of waves or under like a reflecting pool. And in the middle of the room is a giant massive clam that's open. And in the mouth of the clam is a bed. We're about to drown. <gasps> Somehow this is worse than I thought it'd be. Uh, I mean, I was pretty drunk when I was in here last night, but I remember waking up and uh, I thought, wow. <clears throat> so how did you manage to get drunk and not fuck things up? Because maybe you um, could teach Thok. I mean, I was drunk and I uh, befriended Brock, so I think that's probably what helped, but then that kind of got thrown away. Uh, Thok, you could breathe. Uh, I casted breathe underwater on him thanks i didn't actually cast anything but you're fine um is a uh, where where's where's doc sitting or are you sitting or are you laying down what are you doing i thought you yeah, were carrying you me oh, well, where yeah, are you putting when, me <laughs> when we come in i would have like put you onto the bed just kind of had you lay down Ooh, and i'm gonna run my hands on the sheets i'm like these sheets are like border yeah they are silken sheets and i start doing like sand angels but on the sheets sheet angels yeah yeah make sure you do a wide wingspan yeah okay anyways um yeah i did uh befriend brock a little bit so that probably helped but we also didn't talk about anything crazy until he approached me this morning and uh asked if Thok was any different without his hat on and I said you know I, I didn't want to lie to him again because mm -hmm. obviously that kind of got us in hot water yep. uh, and I said uh -huh. pretty sure everyone's a little bit different yep. without a hat on that's so. true do you know what a rhetorical question is <laughs> oh um have not gotten to that chapter yet okay yeah uh so that's a question that I don't really need an answer to because uh the answer is kind of apparent that seems a little bit silly, though. Like, why would you ask a question if you already know the answer? I don't know. Maybe I you guess should I read your book reading. a little bit more, and you'll find out. Okay, we don't need to have the sass. You and me are on the same team. All right. All right. <laughs> what are we going to do? Because my plan... Yeah. My plan... No, Thok, you shut the fuck up. My plan was to talk oh. to her tonight, and I was going to try to smooth things over, find out if there was any sort of end we could get to see if she wouldn't be quite so mad. Maybe I could break the news to her while we're both in a good mood. Can't do that now, because you got drunk as fuck, drinking pitchers, and then she am found out. No, 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 no defense do right now. Wrong. You don't you need a defense right now. You told me not to right tell now. her, so I, I cast didn't command. tell her. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Go ahead. And what are you going to, what, quiet again? Yeah, quiet. I rolled an 8 and a 12, so... You 17. 17. Happy silence. 17. <laughs> you cannot man. quiet me down. Um, I, no. We're a captain. I, I still feel like the thing of it. Like, no, no. I, I didn't break my promise. I didn't say anything. I just sat there. She's the one that came on to me. She's the one that knocked my hat off. Oh. So it was not consensual. I did not ask her to come to me yeah. i was just watching the show you know what probably my fault i shouldn't have let you come to the show you I shouldn't have been drinking her. all day but well brock knew i was not brock yeah and now everyone knows that you're not brock which is what 
Donner wanted anyway. So. Yeah, well, Donner isn't always right. That's for damn sure. All right, cool. We're in agreement. So now let's worry about moving forward. What are we going to do? Not even not... there to defend myself. <laughs> nope. What are we going to nope. do to not get thrown overboard to make sure that we make it to the Island of Storms and make it back? Well, in y'all's defense, she doesn't have a quarrel against y'all. She has it against me. Well, she does now. <clears throat> yeah, we did back. technically withhold information that she would have liked to have been privy to. What, so. that I was on board? Yes, Doc. Yeah, that, that you, you exist in your <laughs> Well, maybe we can strike a deal. Or a bargain. She likes bargains. Is this drunk thought okay, talking, what... or is this sober thought peeking through? It's a little A, a little of B. All right. It's a treaty ship. She likes helping other people with deals, and she makes money out of it. So, why not strike a deal of our own? Okay, um, can you go ahead and, like, try and cure your drunkenness a little bit, so that way you could try and explain what kind of deal you want to try and strike with her? Uh, let's see if I can do that. Give me a second. I can slap yeah. you in the face if you think that'll help. Also, if you nah. don't think it'll help, I'll still do it. Just it in case. It would help. It would. I don't think it would help. <laughs> I don't... No, I can, I can slap my own face. All right, thanks. cool. So uh, let me slap your face. Do it. I don't want gonna... to. Go ahead and make a, uh, a con check at disadvantage. A con check? Oh, God. Yeah. What the hell is my constitution? Um, oh, at disadvantage. That's a five, eight. Okay. You lost that. So as Thok is sitting, you're, Dremel, you're like, or I can slap you in the face. There's a moment, and Thok looks to his side. He's like, yeah, slap me in the face to, like, no one. <laughs> And you see his arm jerk up and immediately just poof, go across his face. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, thank you, Manu, for that one. Tommy's welcome. Oh, I, got, I can't believe I was able to do that. Uh, he says you're welcome. Um, Manu, the whole point was to cast Lesser Restoration on me. Why didn't you do it? I don't have that spell. I'm, I'm going to go poop and see if I can cast it on myself. I think I can. I'm sure you can. I it's cast a touch spell, so you should be able to do it. I touch a creature, so yeah, I'll go poop and cast less restoration on myself to get rid of a condition as poisoned, but I'm assuming drunk is considered poison, so. Yes. You are very sensitive to loud noises and light at the moment. As you and Manu immediately just have this blearing oh. headache that comes in. Shit. Fuck, you're back. All right. Oh, oh, I cast silence on, on Dremel. It's a nightmare. <laughs> like the entire place is silence now in a 10 foot radius centered at Dremel. Or 20 foot radius centered at Dremel. I'm still in your head. I can still talk at a normal I'm, level. I know. Wait. Well, I'm assuming. He, can you hear me? I can like, hear you. But no one else can hear you. Good to know. So, And then I just close my mouth and I'm like, start thinking to him. Does that mean you can hear me now if I think with it instead? Yes, dum-dum. I can hear you. That's awesome. I'll drop, I'll drop silence. What Did are we drop... doing? We need an answer. Oh, God. Should I put it back up? Oh, it's so loud. <laughs> As know. that happens, Donner, you're <laughs> opening the door and you're just hearing Fox shouting. Uh, can I be drunk again? Hi, every. Uh, what? A... Hi. Hey. Hey. What's uh, going on in here? Uh, Thok is sober now and really likes loud noises. So if you Shut want to up. make some loud noises, that'd be awesome. I mean, I could make the loudest noise, but I don't think we should be doing that in here. Is that a I sex will thing? cause deafness on myself if I have to. <laughs> All right, what are we going to do? Don, Look, are you learn anything? I learned that if Aldana's on our side, she's going to vouch for us. Um, I learned that 
if anyone gets if anyone's safe from being thrown overboard, it might be me because Valdana needs me and for no other reason. Uh, but I did tell her that if they were going to throw you guys overboard, I would just jump in after you, unfortunately. Um, I'm also going to talk to... We are going to be summoned to the captain's quarters tomorrow. Um, and I asked to go in before the group of us. I'm going to try and connect and talk to the captain kind of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I don't think that her and I have the connection that maybe you and her have, Drim, but um, being as I'm the one who asked her for favor to get us to the island of the Stormlord, I think it's only fair that I put myself kind of at her mercy first, apologize, let her know that this wasn't... It wasn't intended to go down the way that it did. And that we would be willing to do whatever it took to gain her trust back. That's fair. Um, I'm going to go ahead and when we rest tonight, I'm going to make sure that I have water breathing prepared. Just, God forbid, this doesn't work out and we get thrown off the, the ship. Um, so idea. that way we could try and be all right. But uh, yeah, um, it doesn't sound like a bad idea. All right. I just think less less cooks in the kitchen, you know, maybe could lead to a better result. You know, if I get to say my piece first, that means I don't need to say anything when the whole party's in there. Um, and Val's going to talk to her before me. So maybe that kind of softens the blow a little bit. And we'll see what happens. Well, I will say, though, it seems as though there's a definitive kind of history that she has with Thok, so no matter what, if it's you first or Dremel on your own, however it goes, she's gonna want to talk to him at some point. Yeah, oh. man, it's not gonna be me. She's clearly hates Thok, and she's very mad at me right now. I think the only one that makes sense is Donner. No, I agree. I'm just saying that, like, after that happens, well, there's well, probably others that she's gonna want to talk to. Well, that's why we're all gonna be there, so she doesn't murder the dumbass. She's definitely going to want to talk to Thok for for certain. Um, but I think if we just show that we are apologize for the deceit and we are willing to make amends, I think she'll be understanding. In my experience, um, she's not a mean person. She's <coughs> understanding but protective. And I get wanting to be protective of her ship family. You know, we've kind of invaded that and maybe lost some trust, which hopefully in some time we can earn back. And, you know, if we need to do chores and clean dishes, and I'm sure Thok is willing to do all of that. Mm -hmm. Sounds like right up Thok's alley. Mm -hmm. Alda, do you concur? Yeah, I mean... I can how to cook and help out as well, so I mean I know I'm that sure I got some skills with that, so offering that up would be greatly appreciated, you know, if we're looking for penance. Um but I just wanted you guys to know that you know, Val said they might throw you guys off the ship and um I wouldn't let that happen. At least if you got thrown off the ship I would go with you. You know, we're in this together. I appreciate that. Vindran's Vanguard and all that. Gang, gang. That's what they call us, right? <laughs> I mean, that's what we call us, but it's got to start somewhere. It's true, it's got to catch on. Fuck, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, DM, what I know yes. about how far away the captain's quarters is from where we are right now... Um... <clears throat> Give or take. I mean, you've been there before, so mm -hmm. I, I, you would know where the distance is. Is it within 300 feet? Yeah, yeah. roughly. Hmm. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Hmm. <laughs> it's not that big of a boat. 
Can I? Donna's going to rub his hands together and then just go, I'm glad we could come to an agreement. I'm glad we're on the same page. Let's get some rest. Let's bury our hatchets because I know we all have some oh, I have a anim- hatchet animosity. I want to bury, that's for sure. We all have some animosity right now towards multiple other members of our group, but we are family. We chose this group for ourselves. We knew there was going to be some issues. So let's just work through it as a group and just be better tomorrow. That's all we can do. Mm -hmm. And Donna's going to kind of go to the chair he was in the night before and kind of stoke the fire and get ready to lay down, grab a blanket or something. Okay. So what are going to be the uh, sleeping arrangements? I was in the tub, right? You Last were, night, but you're in the bed You're now. on the bed now. No, I got off the bed. I gingerly walked back to the tub with the migraine I have. And Manu's just kind of shoulder to shoulder with you, rubbing his head. Um, since we just got there, would there already be a fire burning or would we need to uh, get one started? There's a soft fire burning. It's that blue, uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, fire that you were accustomed to earlier in the morning. Gotcha. It's not I just boring, wasn't... but it's 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 there. Okay. I was just going to offer to produce flame on it to get it a little bit, a little bit more bigger. But if there was already one there and he's stoking it, we'll be fine. Okay. And then where are you going to uh, lay your head at? I'll just go ahead and take the spot that I took uh, last night on the corner of the floor. Okay. And uh, Dremel, what you doing? Where are you where are you uh, laying your head? I'll uh, I'll take my stuff and throw it on the bed. Um, keep my book with me, mm-hmm. and uh, just kind of walk out the room. Okay. So you, uh, Donner, you see Dremel. And uh, Alder, you would also see this as Dremel kind of unloads all of his stuff on the bed, picks up his book, and he uh, exits the room. Who's uh, who's closest to the door? Uh, probably me. Probably Donner. Okay. Uh, as I walk out, I cast Minor Illusion into Donner's ear and just say, I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh. Okay. So, Donner, you kind of rustle in for the night, <clears throat> kind of doing this sitting up, uh, sleepy... Half sitting up, half trying to, to rest, and Alder, you're trying to make the uh, the floor comfortable. It was a lot more comfortable when you were drunk. I uh, had a feeling it would be, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stay up a little bit. And uh, first thing that I'm going to do is see if there's an appendix in my book, uh, just to see if I could find there's if there's anything about rhetorical questions, so that way I can read up on those a little bit more. Uh, and then I'm also going to continue working on that letter that I was writing. Okay. Uh, you are able to go to the back of the, the book. There is an appendix of different kind of uh, terms and whatnot. And you do see that there is a rhetorical, like, uh, questions and chit-chat. So that's where you would assume rhetorical would be under. Gotcha. Okay, so quite a few chapters till I get there. Uh, I'll just kind of thumb to that page, keeping my place so that way I can read up on it a little bit mm-hmm. and be like, still don't get it. Okay. Um, And then while you do that, after you kind of read it over a little bit, you uh, pull out your parchment and you begin writing again as Aya is kind of on top of the clamshell looking at you kind of curiously. Yeah, and I'll probably pick up my staff and, you know, obviously, well, I mean, I don't need it. I'll probably just use my, my ability to talk to her and I'll just be like, would you want to get sent on a trip? And she looks at you quizzically. And you see her and she kind of comes down and looks at you and then looks at what you're writing and then back to you. <clears throat> and I'll uh, use the staff to cast Speak with Animals with her. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like... Uh, which, if I cast Speak with Animals, it's going to make my voice sound like I'm speaking in animal tongues, correct? It's going to be hawk noises, yes. Gotcha. So I'm going to try and keep it quiet. 
so that way it's not incredibly loud like I would assume a hawk would be. Um, but uh, I'll just be like, when Zunu told me that I had brothers, I was upset. And you know I've talked to my mother since then. And she's never said anything. So if I were to write her a letter, do you think that you'd be able to take it to her? If not, I can wait till we get to a post. I don't want to put that much stress on you, girl. But While you're kind of like rambling to her, she softly puts her head in your hands and looks at you. And pecks a little bit. And she spreads her wings to display how, how large her wingspan is now. Yeah, I know. You've gotten large. You're not, not a little baby hawk anymore. It'll be a long trip, though. That's why I say. And, and if I send you there, it might be in your best interest to stay around there until I get there. Because I don't know where we'll be, and I don't know how you'll... Unless you... I mean, I know you're a good scout, but I don't know. <laughs> you know have an idea where the hell we'll be. And she looks at you concerned. And you just hear very simply lonely as she asks you. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I know I have the group, but especially without having you by my side, it's definitely going to feel lonely. Probably worse than worse than prison, knowing that I don't know where you'll be. And I know I wouldn't have a way to reach you. At least there, I could get updates on you. This way, I wouldn't be able to. And she looks at you and she goes, okay. And very, you know, she hops a little bit over to you and she kind of nestles up to your neck as you continue to write. I have a decision to make, I guess. And then I'll just kind of nuzzle back and go under, rub against her beak and give her a kiss on the head. As you continue to write. Um, <clears throat> Donner, you, you kind of hear... Alder kind of whispering to to Aya, and you can assume that it's just weird druid stuff. Weird druid stuff. Uh, I'm going to uh, pull out my figurine of the Silver Raven. Okay. And I'm going to uh, speak my command word, which is Halid, uh, okay. Halland, my father's name. Um, and I can use an the figurine is an animal messenger mm -hmm. and it stays in raven form for 12 hours and i'm going to send it after dremel and all i'm going to say to it is i'm going to kind of go down and look at it and say hi little guy um i want you to deliver a message to dremel for me all right and i'll look at it and i'll Looks go at you inquisitively okay ready i thought you could use some company so here's ringo Keep him as long as you need. By the way, he will go back to Raven form in 12 hours. Uh, statue form in 12 hours. And then I'll open the door. Okay. And send him on his way. And you see Ringo and he kind of swoops on out. And I'm going to uh, read my book by the fire about the gods that uh, Ashiki gave me. Mm -hmm. Any particular god that you're looking for? Uh, I'm going to look up for any new uh, storm gods or um, see if I can find anything about um, the god that was outside of the captain's, Captain Creed's quarters. Okay. So it takes you a little bit, but <clears throat> you are able to eventually get to uh, this kind of wide, um, this symbol of it looks to be almost like it's Creed herself. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, a picture of a very young, slender face with red, fiery hair, only instead of golden 
or I'm sorry, silver eyes, you see these deep emerald green ones. And you slowly start to learn that uh, this is Soon, who is the a newer demigod in regard to prosperity and um, uh, kind of like, not like a nature god, but if there is a god of love, she would be it. And you learn a little bit more and more about that. And uh, if you'd like to delve in further, I can always expand on that. Cool. Um, while that happens, Dremel, you're currently writing as you are making your way in the hallway when Paul slowly just kind of lands in front of you. Or I'm sorry, Ringo. Ringo. <laughs> you see this silver raven kind of looking at you. That seems to be almost a mirror image of Paul, only the other side of the eye is janked up. But he's, is it a blackbird or is he silver? He's silver. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could work with this. And it does relay Donner's message to you. Uh, so sorry, I don't remember completely what the message was. I remember the gist of it. Okay. So I, I, I look at him and I just, kind of nod my head you kind of pet the pet him a little bit and then just motion for him to hop up on my left shoulder and you see him and he hops up and he is heavy because he is full pewter <laughs> <laughs> oh maybe this wasn't a good idea hey uh ringo can you lighten up a little bit a couple flaps <laughs> oh thank you very much and uh i'll i'll Seeing this and kind of disrupting my 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 uh, drawing, I'm gonna head out to the bow of the ship. Okay. To finish my letter and finish my drawing. Okay. So kind of as you said at the bow of the ship, Ringo hops off of your uh, shoulder and kind of sits at the the bow of the ship. Then you sit there for a while and you continue to write, and you hear the all familiar flappings of a different bird as Paul lands directly next to Ringo. Dremel takes a deep breath. Like, I'm I'm not doing this tonight. (laughs) And I just turn away and kind of look at, look at Ringo and just, can can you, can you do something, please? And I, I go back to working on my project. Okay. As you are working on your project, and you kind of hear just this kind of croaking and back and forth and cawing. You hear very, you feel very gently a hand on your shoulder that gently squeezes before you turn around and it's just Paul and Ringo cawing at each other. And Paul looks back over at you with his good eye. All right, then. Keep your secrets. And I'll go back to just finishing. At this point, I'm pretty close to finishing. I, I would have finished the uh, the letter itself. I'm, I'm yes. drawing a very ornate uh, rose, the best that I can. Okay. So, as you continue to finish that, Thok, what are you doing with Manu in the tub? Just going straight to sleep? No, I... First, see if he wants anything. I'll just be like, hey... It's been a rough night. You just want to go to bed. Um, I heard like some of that. It's just there's a very loud ringing in my ears. Why would you like to stay up and continue this torture? No, I'd like to go to bed, but I'd like a second alone if that's okay. I'm. I'll do my best. Anything you want to clue me in? I just miss someone. And he goes, sure, I, uh, I'll i put my fingers in my ears and see if I can go into the void. And you see him and he plugs his ears and you see his uh, form slowly dissipate. I, he... um, I lay down in the tub and I put my shield next to me and look at my reflection and with my hat of disguise, I'm going to make myself look like Tiburon. Mm-hmm. So it looks like I'm laying next to him. And just kind of like run my hand on the shield. Yeah. 
Just kind of so, like do that for a little bit. So because we haven't had the opportunity since the first session, do you want to go ahead and describe what Timber looks like? Oh, God. I, the last time you saw him? Do you, He's a hunk. You are <laughs> right. I don't think I've ever described him. I never thought of it. Huh? I'm putting up a picture because now i got to remember what the hell I drew. Um, <laughs> uh, He's so, blue. Yes, he is. Uh, so... Tiburon is a water ganasi. Um, he is blue with like greenish short hair, a red headband. Um, he's slender build. He's a lot shorter than Thok. Like Thok is 6'10. Tiburon's like 5'8, maybe 5'9. Um, uh, he has gauntlets and like he's pretty much a pirate. So like cut off or no sleeves, striped. Red and gray shirt, um, yeah. I would, like he has very fish-like features, so his ears instead of being like regular human ears, they're like fish. He like I don't know how to describe it. Um, He's a and fishy, then, sexy Captain Planet. Yes, <laughs> yes. There you go. Basically. Pretty much. It's like that's pretty much Tiburon, a fishy, sexy Captain Planet. That's actually a very good. <laughs> with no mullet. Is he going to bring pollution down to zero? Breathe. Maybe. Breathe. He's going to bring Fox's sexual frustration down to zero. <laughs> He's going to bring his penis down to zero. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad. Great. <laughs> um, He's going to cut his dick off? Yeah. So <laughs> He's very uh, Roll for new penis. <laughs> so you look back at the, the shield and in the reflection is Tibran. And obviously, as you manipulate your face, his face manipulates back with you. And eventually, you find that soft look he gives you and those more quiet moments that the two of you have together as you glance and slowly kind of close your eyes, almost like there's just a pane of glass in between you. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to keep away looking at him as much as possible, but being hungover, I don't stay awake for long. And I fall asleep as the form shimmers back to me. Agreed. So, Dremel, you're able to finish your artwork. Paul has converted back to his black form as opposed to the pink form that you asked him to. And he is kept fairly quiet as he is occasionally you've felt him flapping and he looks at what you're doing and then goes back to the bow. Every time you kind of like move to see what the fuck he's doing, he moves back. Are you trying to help? What? what? I'm at a loss, man. What, what do you need? And it looks at you and you get one word out of Paul as Paul's beak opens and just goes interesting before closing its mouth. Huh. <laughs> that is, in fact, the word I would use to describe interesting. So you can talk. Can you read? Opens mouth. Yes. Closes mouth. Want to give me some feedback on the letter? What kind of letter? Close. A combination of the 26 letters in this language interlaced with spaces and punctuation to create an idea implemented on the page handed off to another person. What a fucking Dremel response. Opens mouth. <laughs> I am confused. You seem to care for this person. Close. Why does that confuse you? Opens mouth. You never seem to care about anyone other than yourself. Close. <laughs> that is a... Uh... What's the word? Adolescent true. view. True statement. Hmm. <laughs> That is an adolescent view of a complex man being myself. You are not that complex. 
Nor are you. I am not. Well, shit, that's not what I thought you'd say. <laughs> Always with surprises, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. And Paul kind of looks at you and goes, I have missed you. <laughs> have you now? Yes. Have you now? And it looks at you again with its good eye and goes, yes. And Dremel slowly pulls his hand up to go and, and pet Paul the same way he did Ringo. And you see Paul's head kind of go tuck in his breast as he allows you to pet his head. But just as I'm about to, something comes over him and he, he can't do it. He pulls his hand back and gives gives a Paul a long look and says, uh, come on, Ringo, and starts to walk away. And he walks away, and as he gets toward the steps, the stairs to go back down, he takes a look back to see if Paul's looking at him. And Paul's still there. And you see the beak open. I'll be here when you get back. If you'd like. Dremel takes a deep breath, preparing to say something. Even in the middle of the breath, he's not decided if he's ready to be genuine, if he's going to say something snarky. <laughs> and it's just, it, it is a rage of, of turmoil, of a, of a torn soul inside of him in this moment. And... He decides the best thing to do is to say nothing. Uh, gives a small nod and walks back down into the bowel of the ship. Yes. And as you kind of look and you nod at Paul, you see Paul quietly nod as well as Paul kind of shifts his body and is looking at the bow of the ship at the moon. As you kind of go down with Ringo on your shoulder and you're like, that was so fucking weird. Um, and eventually you do get to your destination if you would like to inform the rest of your party in game. Oh, yeah. So I, uh, I wrote a letter with an ornate rose drawn on it to give to uh, Captain Creed. I'm going to slide it under her, um, her door. I, I wrote a quick like summary version of what I wanted to say to Justin to send that to him so he knows. But it is a letter just for Dremel and uh, Creed. So as I get to the door, Dremel takes a knee. Uh, what time is it about? Um, I would say it's about 10, 1030. You took a, a good chunk of time up there. When you got up there, I would say it was about 10. Okay. So 1030. Um, as I kneel at the door, do I hear any motion inside? You do. You hear motion, and uh, you are immediately hit with that smell of crushed cloudberries. Uh, Dr Dremel takes in one big whiff of it, not knowing mm -hmm. if the smell is only there when... I don't know. Just wanted to make sure he, he savors it. Prepares himself to take this letter that he poured his heart out into and slides it under the door and immediately turns around to leave. Uh, if if I hear the door start to uh, to open, I want a misty mm -hmm. step or not misty step, um, hidden step until I can invisible. get invisible. Yeah, so I'm going to turn invisible, um, but only if I hear mm -hmm. the door open, just so I can get out of the way. Okay. And then head back toward the um, the the room. Okay. Takes a little bit, and you kind of wait, and you hear the rustling occasionally, and. Uh, you put the letter under the door or you put it in front of the door? Under the door. I slid it so that she might read it tonight. Okay. And you do see that like a, a portion of it is still kind of under the door. And as you kind of turn around, you see it slowly kind of move in from under the door before you turn around and head back to the aquatic room. Sexy. It's not. Laser disc. Like laser disc. Laser so, disc. Eventually, you get to the aquatic room, and I would assume because it's 1030 that Donner, you're still awake, Alder, you're still writing, and the only one who's really been, who needs the rest is Thok. So uh, 
it's about 30 minutes or so before Dremel kind of comes back with Ringo on his shoulder. And Dremel, you take a big deep breath as you kind of close the door and you see your two companions in your room. And I make eye contact and I kind of just nod almost to say like I've calmed down and uh, I'll just walk over to the bed, kind of lay down, prepare myself for sleep. Okay. Anything else you guys are doing uh, Mm. for the night? Nope. Donna's done. Other than read, obviously. uh, Toss a quick uh, good night to the guys. Just uh, sleep well. I think we're probably going to need it for whatever tomorrow has in store for us. Good night, Alda. Good night. Good night. So, the night is fairly peaceful. Uh, for most of you, I mean, whoever is not accustomed to being on a ship, the only one who would sleep soundly is Thok. If not, for the uh, images in his head as his dreams return to him. Uh, Thok, I need you to make a wisdom save at disadvantage for me since you're hungover. Twenty, not natural. Okay. Let's see how they do. They got a twenty-three. So, as you have images of Tibrin, you uh, <clears throat> remember yourself on the horizon, and you dream of being on the horizon again. And you're sitting with Tibrin on the uh, the front deck, across from each other, and. It's almost like he is there and you're catching him up on everything that's happened. The prison, your incarceration, Vindran, everything. And he just smiles and gestures and comments on your story before the sapphire sky that's above you slowly starts turning that magenta color, that sickly, dull magenta. And he has this worried look on his face before you blink and... In front of you, instead of uh, Tibrin, is Manu. As he goes, how long was I out for? As the two of you are currently on the horizon, as there is water endlessly around you, almost like you're one grain of sand in a massive desert. As you just hear the, the labored breathing. And he's like, sounds like Hotep is back. Yep. Seems you ran into trouble on the sea. Just a little bit. Well, the sooner you fall into the ocean, the sooner I can get my hands on you. Well, then you're going to have to wait a little bit longer because I don't have any plans on falling into the ocean. (laughs) You hear this laughing cough, dry. Uh, Plans don't always bend the way you want them. Uh, To Garrosh. Exactly. That can go both ways. Your plans cannot always go the way you want them to. Uh, uh, Garrosh, I am imminent. And our meeting is foretold. By who? Uh, Fate. I look over at Manu. And Manu <clears throat> looks back over at you, and he has this very distraught look over his face, but he looks like he's trying to pull it together. Well, then when we meet, we'll meet. <sighs> 
look forward to it. That makes one of us. Follow the taste of death in the air. I'll be there waiting for you, Garrosh. What does it say? Follow the taste of the air? Of death in the air? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Well, hopefully you don't mind waiting. I have waited long enough. The longer I wait, the closer I will get to you. <laughs> Have nothing. As you kind of sit and the vision slowly starts to fade, you hear <sighs> your boyfriend's cute. <sighs> we come out of it. As you peer your eyes open and you're <clears throat> staring back at the the shield and you just look at yourself as you hear the soft snoring of your comrades as slowly close your eyes back and the rest of your uh, sleep is I wouldn't say restful but you are able to take the benefits of a full long rest as those thoughts are still in your mind ingrained so hours pass anything you guys are particularly doing um Waking up in the middle of the night because I know how you guys is sneaky, snacky shit. Uh, no, I'd like <clears throat> to uh, <clears throat> try and beat Dremel out in the morning though. Like to try and wake up as early as I can and okay. just go to the the bow of the ship, uh, the deck rather, and um, just kind of meet the sun in the morning before. Um, and I guess I'll. Uh, Drem, did you give Ringo back, or is he still on your shoulder? Uh, I don't know. What would he do when I went to sleep? Would he have... He would still be a bird, so he's 12 hours. He's around. Yeah, he probably would have... Uh, I would have had him move instead of being on my my shoulder to just sleep on my chest or stand, whatever onyx birds do. Okay. Uh, then I would like grab some parchment and a quill and just write uh, to Val... Uh, just a quick note mm -hmm. to know where I'm going to be if she needs to come get me at any point. Just let her know that I'm going to be on the deck. Uh, if at any point, you know, it's time to talk to the captain. Okay. That's where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, depends. How early do you wake up, Dremel? Uh, what, we went to sleep around 11? Yeah. I usually try to match the sun. So I like okay. to do my meditation with the rise gotcha okay so there is this kind of timing thing that happens as dremel you're kind of putting your pants back on and you're starting to put your boots on dremel you open one eye and you see that donner is moving about the cabin uh seeing that i would just pretend to still be asleep let him okay. do whatever he needs to do <clears throat> okay so donner without even a hesitation you don't notice dremel at all because you're kind of set in your way nope uh, but i would put on uh all of my equipment. I would put on my armor. Okay. My mace. I would be all set, ready to be thrown off the ship. Okay. So you <clears throat> you take everything and you go to the bow of the ship and you see that the uh, <clears throat> sapphire sky is slowly starting to turn <clears throat> violet, this deep violet color, as eventually you hear flapping wings as Paul kind of sits at the bow of the ship. Oh, hi, Paul. And I'll reach out and kind of like rub out there his chin. And he allows you to, to rub his chin. Looks at you inquisitively. You look so familiar to me. I don't know what it is. And Paul's beak opens and goes, You should think harder. Are you like Ringo? Are you a figure? Are you someone's... Son, do not insult me. I am no lo nothing like Ringo. Ringo is an inanimate object, and I am not. 
Okay. Uh, then I will think harder. I apologize for upsetting you, if that's what I did. Um, what's got you out here so early? I am waiting. What are you waiting for? I am waiting to be reunited. Reunited with? With someone I care about. Okay. Is it someone on the ship? Yes. I have many people on the ship that I care about. Can I know who they are? You are one of them. Oh, I am. Yes. That's nice. I feel like I just like met you somewhat recently and I don't... I'm sorry. Me? Yes, you have. Yeah, I don't... We haven't seen each other before no i have seen you though before oh just like when you were showing up for dremel no when you were younger what do you mean when i was younger when you were throwing up on yourself and pooping in diapers listen my teens were rough i liked to party a lot and it was an interesting time for everyone you're using humor to hide your confusion yeah, I'm kind of confused why a bird is talking to me. I am not a bird. What are you? And it kind of looks, and you see its eye, its good eye close and open. I do not know. There is not a term for me. Okay, well, I'll, you're, you're just my friend, I guess. Yes, I am your friend. Welcome to our party. You're a member of Vindran's Vanguard now. And it kind of looks inquisitively and kind of um, amused and goes, thank you for inviting me to your party, but I belong to another clan. Well, it's an open invitation. You can kind of come and go as you please, as you obviously know. Thank you. And I'll just kind of keep rub, uh, rubbing him under the chin, and I'll just look out to the horizon and uh, just at the stars as okay. they start to fade away. And you look at the stars, and you see the moon slowly start to fade. And as you do, you see that same familiar kind of ring of fire that just kind of goes around it. <clears throat> okay. Before long, Dremel, you are uh, the second to wake as Ringo is sleeping on your chest. And you had seen Donner leave. Uh, if I'm awake now, uh, Ringo would still be an actual bird, right? He wouldn't be back to the idol. Yes. Yet. All right. Then um, I will get up, realize he's still in my chest, and it's very heavy. Uh, <laughs> then I, I, oh, oh, right, Ringo. Ugh, I kind of scoop him up, place him to the side, stretch a little bit look at Ringo and say you want to come with me and Ringo kind of looks at you and hops then onto your uh, your shoulder all right remember flap and you see Ringo <laughs> put out his uh his wings man we got to get you on a better diet and then I'll walk out of the room um how early is it um, it's fairly early. I would say, uh, Donner and you woke up at about five ish. So assuming that I would assume that you would wait maybe like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah. Just enough for him to get out, do his thing. Yeah. And, um, then yeah, I'll go to the ship and instead of going up top, I'm going to go kind of into more of the, the bowels, go a little deeper maybe toward what would be an engine room. Were there an engine okay. room in a seat in like a wind powered ship? What is the ship powered by? The ship is powered currently by wind through does the it, sails. Does it have an engine? I haven't asked. I just did. If you haven't asked the person who a, owns the a ship. A real person, not God. He's real to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then yeah, I'll go to where a, uh, a, where I think a um, fuck engine would be, if there is one. Assuming there wouldn't be like a lot of people around, just kind of deep into the ship where I can find some, some solitude for myself. Okay, 
Um, you can kind of follow a rumbling, but eventually the rumbling does take you to the staircase that goes down to where Creed's quarters are. Um, you kind of turn back there and you find that uh, the ballroom is very quiet and that obviously no one is in there while it's during off hours and you kind of sit down where the stage is and you breathe in and you kind of recenter yourself. Anything else that you're particularly doing? Uh, nope. Once I finish my ritual, I will, uh, Hey, all right, Ringo. Hey, first person to get to see that with me. And Ringo looks at you inquisitively. Yeah, I know. It's almost like I'm a brand new person. I'm always much happier right after. Continues to look at you. <clears throat> well, let's go. Let's wake up the guys. Okay. So, you get back into the room refreshed and uh, ready to go as how are you going to wake up the guys? <laughs> uh, well, I, I would be in. up already. You would be up already? Mm -hmm. my, my trance is only four hours. Okay. So you would be up as everything is kind of moving and shaking as you were meditating for your four hours. Uh, so Dremel, you kind of burst back in as Alder is currently uh, sitting upright. His eyes are closed as I is sitting on his shoulder, and as the door opens, Alder, you kind of open one eye. Morning. Morning. Are you ever not going to do that trance? Sorry? Are you ever not going to just go into a trance? Just sleep like the uh, rest of us? I did last night. Didn't really have much of a choice. Well, not last night, the night before. Sorry. Oh, when you were drunk as fuck. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was the time. I do it occasionally, but I mean, four hours of rest is really all I need. Lucky dog. Uh, doesn't yeah, look like dog's up yet, is he? I mean, he's probably still got a bit of a hangover that he's nursing, so. Yeah. Um, what kind of. Right. Uh, and I'll kind of start looking around for different amenities that are in the room uh, to see if I can try and like maybe prepare a breakfast or um, if all of that would be through different parts of the boat. Most likely they would be through different parts of the boat. You do see that there is an iced over like bucket that you would assume would have champagne in it, but there it's just literally just water at this point. And gotcha. uh, there's yeah condensation kind of just around the, uh, the outside of the bucket. Other than that, it's, I mean, this is, not really a breakfast room. No, that's fine. Um, in that case, I'll be—I'll I'll just kind of look to Dremel and be like breakfast. Sure. And I, okay. I'm, I'm gonna—I'm gonna look over to Thok and uh, cast minor illusion into the tub to make it sound like it's filling up with water. Okay. So Thok, being the uneasy sleep that you had for the second half. You're kind of laying there. You hear some like <clears throat> minor conversation, but you're in that uh, state uh, between being awake and sleeping before you start feeling and hearing this rushing of water above you. Um, with the mention of Tiburon being the last thing Hotev said to me mm -hmm. and me being protective pissed i would jump like sit up immediately and slam my hands down like on the side and you'll see like red veins up and his eyes and my <clears throat> eyes are red and once i realize where i am it subsides and you actually make finger indents on the sides of the uh the tub before you release your grip and those indentations are there as drummle you hear uh, fuck gasp and you hear this crunching noise of metal being balled up well she's already mad at us might as well destroy her property too sorry I... Bad let's dream. get breakfast 
Okay. So, three of you kind of come up and... Donner, you're out there with Paul, and Paul is just kind of sitting and looking out at the uh, the suns and the stars with you as the, the twin suns slowly start to come up. Anything else you want to say to Paul before your friends get there? Uh, I would just be making conversation. Um, I probably would say... Um, you know where we're going, right? I do. I'm nervous. Why are you nervous? I'm nervous about what I'm going to find. What are you nervous you will find? I'm looking for information about my <clears throat> about my family. And uh, I'm afraid that I'll find some things that I'm not going to be excited about. I know about your family. What do you know about my family? I know that you have two brothers. One of them is a twin. I know that uh, you were married and you had a son. You don't happen to know where any of those people are in the world right now, do you? I do. Can you tell me where they are? Would you want to know? Kind of. And kind of not, if that makes sense. It does. <clears throat> because if I give you the information, you may not like the answer. And then that hope of perhaps them being out there waiting for you may be extinguished. Or that hope would reunite you. How about this? After we make it through the temple on the island of the Storm Lord, if I don't get any answers that I'm looking for, I'll come to you, all right? Yes, you may come to me. Perfect. And do not call me Paul. That is not my name. Okay. What should I call you? Moonin. Moonin? Yes. Perfect. Moonin, I appreciate you. Um, are you still going to be... You just Are you with us now? Or are you just here sometimes? Well, I do have to look after you and the group. You have to look after me? Yes. You are very troublesome. <laughs> and so is your blue friend. That is why I follow him. He okay. is mischievous. He's got he's got a mischievous side for sure. He but does. He's got a good heart. I have, I am just seeing it. it. Takes a little bit. There's a lot of layers. Yes, lots of layers. I'm not the troublemaker. Well, I used to be. Eh. You're thinking about young Donna. Well, uh, that is the basis of what I have. I do not know this new daughter. It's fair. I don't know you very much at all, Moonin, so I'm excited to get to learn more about you together. I will be quiet now. Okay. Your friends are coming. Perfect. As you kind of turn around and Dremel, Alder, and Thok kind of come up the stairs, and you see that Donner is already fully adorned in his armor, and he's looking at the uh, the skyline, and you see that he's talking to Paul as Paul is looking at him inquisitively. And it almost looks like Paul looks over at the three of you and whatever beak it was open immediately just kind of shuts and then looks back over at Donner. Hi, guys. Morning. Morning. Think we uh, maybe get some breakfast before we get down to before we get thrown quarters? off the boat? Yeah. Yeah. Good final meal, potentially. I hear eating a lot of food helps you float. I've also heard that. Um, let's let's test that theory out. That's, that's actually says accurate. I sure love science. Says in the, it says in the book, though, to make sure that we wait at least 30 minutes after we eat to get in the water. It doesn't really fit in the chapter, but it, for some reason it was just like scribbled in there, handwritten. So I don't know if that's something that Shiki knows. But 30 minutes after you eat is when you can go in the water. The we better eat to me. soon, because uh, <laughs> we might be in the water in 29 minutes from now. Oh, no, she's yes. going to have to wait that extra one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's go get some food. Okay. So the four of you convene at uh, the table on the, the top of the deck, and eventually Valdana kind of comes out, and she's a little bleary-eyed, and she's back in her regular kind of casual wear. Her dreads are kind of pulled back as she looks at the four of you, and she goes, Can anyone come out 
I get coffee yet? <sighs> I can go do that. No one has yet, but I, I'd be happy to if I can. And she goes, you don't there. know where it is. It's fine. And you see her, and she goes behind the uh, the bar as you see her kind of pull up this very crude looking French press. And you see her pull up a, uh, a tea kettle that she kind of puts on and she taps. And you see it slowly start to uh, become this kind of blue tea kettle. And you see the underside starting to become red as the steam starts escaping from it. Uh, as she does that I kind of lean over to Alder or Don or whoever's next to me and just say well fuck me for trying to learn no what happens how they eventually <clears throat> she, uh, she comes back with uh, five cups and she pours you all this, uh, this very nice uh, almost fruity kind of coffee that uh, really just hits the spot as eventually one of the the barmaids kind of comes out and she goes we're going to be meeting with um jesse soon so um and she looks at the four of you something light perhaps i like, thought we wanted something heavy we wanted all the all the food in the stomach so that it rises you to the top it's like an old eggs are fluffy anyway. and she looks at you donner and then she looks at dremel and she goes you know that buoyancy happens when there's air, like an air pocket, right? Right. So we'll get some, and I look at Donner, uh, fluffy eggs. Fluffy right? eggs. That's what and, I said. And airy pancakes. And she looks over and thought, you're a pirate. <laughs> you should know how this works. I told her it wasn't going to work. They just didn't want to listen to me. And she looks over and she's like, we will just have eggs, please, and not a lot of them. Yeah, just like half a dozen should be okay. For the table. Ah, uh, for me. Not for him. Uh, can I also get a half a dozen? Is that... No! No, we're not getting... <sighs> can and I just so... get coffee? Just, just coffee. Just, We'll just keep the coffee going and... Please let us know when uh, she's awake. And you see the, the barmaid, and she kind of looks down. She goes, yes, I'll make sure I, I make that right away. I'm sure that she is um, anticipating your meeting before kind of scuttling off. And you see uh, Valdana, and she tosses back some of the coffee, and she goes, so what's the, uh, the decision? Because it sounds like that you guys are preparing to just be tossed overboard. Uh, prepare for the worst and expect the best. It's kind of hmm. our motto. It is. Uh, it is now. Cool. In, I like it. It's an hermit. <laughs> a terrible motto. Paint it on your board. Mm, interest and, pin. It's a thing. And so... It's a good idea. That's... Donna, what did you want to speak to her about? Uh, basically, mercy. Mercy. Oh. I've, I've outlined it with the guys. It's... I've kind of got an idea of what I want to say. So you don't have to worry about me. I'm not going to make a fool of myself. I constantly worry about you making a fool of yourself. I know. But last time we were in the captain's quarters, who did all the talking? It was me. So have a little faith, Aldana. Okay. And you see her and she kind of like leans back and she goes, Okay, um, if you have any leverage or anything like that, please keep that in mind as well. Try to, um, and she kind of like looks for the word, connect with her. I mean, Dremel, you were able to do that, but you kind of thrown that to shit. But I didn't if throw you can, shit. and she goes. Besides the point, perhaps when you're begging for mercy, try to find something like a common ground you can kind of stand on. Because, once again. I think you would be okay. I'm not sure about... Yes. And then she gestures at the other three. You've, them. You've made that clear, Valdana. I've told them that. And we're prepared. But... Just have some faith. And... She goes, okay. Anything else that you would like to discuss during this very lovely dinner conversation or breakfast conversation? Uh, I'll look at... Uh, Dremel and I'll go his name is Moonin 
by the way. Uh, <laughs> who? Paul. No, his name is Paul. That's why we call him Paul. No, his name is Moonin, and he's respectfully asked us to start calling him by his name. Wait, he talked to you? Yeah. He didn't say anything to me. This makes sense, at least in my head. So, I mean, I could have hallucinated. It could be me going crazy, but I would appreciate it if we started calling him by the name that I hallucinated, uh, Moonin. Oh, that's fine. I'm just, it, it makes all sense in my head as to why every time I cast Speak with Animals, it didn't work on him. He's, I'm right now in the fact that he's probably not a bird. Uh, I'm really not really... sure what he is. Maybe you're just really I bad no at idea. magic. It could be that too. Have you thought about that? I really mean, good cook, really well. bad at magic? Done pretty well with magic so far. You guys have seen it, so. Okay, maybe bird magic's not your strength. Eh. Yeah, let's we'll go toe-to-toe go to toe in bird magic and see who comes out the victor. <laughs> yeah. Can we get an expert on bird law out here, too, just in case? <laughs> no. Make sure it's by the book. <laughs> Someone comes from, the, from below deck. I know bird law! <laughs> Does and your bird reason, make too much noise all the time? <laughs> he looks like Charlie Kelly. <laughs> I'm just too hungover to even try to follow this conversation. And Manu is <clears throat> basically sitting on the table as they're all conversing. And he has not broken, like, eye contact. Like, every time you, like, look down and look back up, he's just kind of, like, looking at you. Uh, mentally, I look at him, but I don't say... Well, I look at him and then mentally say, like, what? But do I have something on my face? No. How did he know Tibrin's name? That's my thoughts exactly. <sighs> and he's just... He knows my family name. And he knows who is closest to you. This seems incredibly personal. And you know nothing of this Hotep person. God. Being just, whatever just the hell he is. Hotep is my last name and my family name. But they never told you an origin? Weren't you ever curious? Like, Of course I was curious. My family's name has gone from generations to generations. We were slaves and then we were... Gladiators, and eventually we were farmers. Nothing about being a god. I think I would have known that. I mean, well, he said that the longer he waits, the closer he will be to us. So I guess we'll find out in due time, man, because I'm not going to seek him out. Okay. My... When I got frustrated with you... I threatened to blow up your ship. Did you succeed? I, you came and found me, idiot. We were in oh. the same place with the same area. You came to prevent that, no? True. It was a long time ago. I forgot. Leave me alone. It was like two months ago. <laughs> I'm so exactly. Sorry. I don't even remember why I... Last night. Like, you think I'm going to remember something that happened two months ago? The fact but, of the matter is, we are endangering not only your friends, we're endangering Tibrin, Sue, your beloved boat, my family, arguably. No, I know. I, I just don't know. I, right now, right now we have to matter with the task at hand, because essentially... Depending on this how how this conversation with Captain Creed goes, we might not need to worry about anything else anymore. <laughs> but we'll find out. Let's please, pretty please, with an onk on top. Don't yeah. piss her off. I don't I, want to live in the bottom of the ocean for the rest of whatever the fuck this is. I won't. Or I'll try not to. I've already done that. Um and once we get out of this current predicament, 
I'll defer to the group about Hotep. Okay, just do me a favor. Just put your captain face on. You're a captain for a reason. You're a leader. Come on. Let me drink, like, five more of these first, and then I'll put that on. As I, like, finish my first cup. And you start pouring yourself a second. And oh, for see, sure. And he's just like, great. So, anything else that's going to be discussed during breakfast before you are eventually all summoned? Uh, wouldn't Donner be going there first? He wanted to go there first. That's true, I did. So... Be, be, before he did that, though, like a, after drinking about half the cup of coffee, I would kind of perk up a little bit mm -hmm. uh, and just kind of lean over to Donner um, and say, oh, hey, um, if you do get to talk to her, talk about Vindran's... I'm going to rephrase that. Uh, talk about Vindran's musical box. made <laughs> <laughs> for my son? Yeah. Why? She knows Vindrin. She has a she has one. She knows Vindrin? I I in some way, yeah. She's she has a box just like that. I I can't believe I forgot about it until now, but uh I, I she's not gonna listen to me, uh right now. But i I don't know. She's connected to us somehow. Okay. I appreciate the heads up. The heads up. Um, I'll do what I can with that information. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. And I'm not sold on calling him Moonin yet. <laughs> so, if you come up with any more reason why I should, I'm open to it, but I'm an evidence-based man. I believe in science. Uh, I mean, he's worried about you and he looks after you. He said so himself, and he said you're mischievous. Um, so I think the least we can do, if he's looking out for you and us, is call him by the name he wants to be called by. Sounds like he's just throwing out insults left and right. I mean, he said I was mischievous too, and if we're brothers, I mean, it only makes sense. I mean, maybe he doesn't know what the word mischievous means, so I guess. It I guess maybe I can call him. Moonin. And you hear very high in the crow's nest, Moonin. <laughs> do to I which, hear that this time? Yes, the four of you do hear from the top of the crow's nest, Moonin. Well, I'll be damned. As it looks down, as Moonin kind of looks at all of you from the crow's nest, told you. I mean, it doesn't really roll off the tongue like Paul. Moonin. I know, but I'm just saying it doesn't sound as good sometimes when it comes out of my mouth. Fucking, fucking calm moon in, I guess. Good. <laughs> you didn't hear that. Yes, I did. Fuck you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry. Old habits. <laughs> old habits. <laughs> oh, God. We probably shouldn't be drawing attention to ourselves this early in the morning. <laughs> You're not my dad. <laughs> You're right. I'm not. He's right. I'm I think, not. You're think my Moonen brother. might be. Oh boy. It's too early for that too. <laughs> so take a sip of coffee. As you guys are sipping through your coffee and you get this new information, eventually uh you do see Amori kind of come up and uh she looks Okay, um we're all settled and whatnot. Yes. As settled as we can be. Okay, um, so, uh, the captain is, will see you now. As she I kind am... of gestures and Val slowly starts to get up. See, so, all of us or some of us? As she said, summon the, uh, friends of the traitor, so I assume. Okay, okay. Before we walk in, I prepared this what the hell is it? Um, I'm going to cast um, on myself. I'm just going to like run my uh, hand through the feather that I have on mm -hmm. my um, necklace. And I'm going to cast an enhanced ability on myself. Okay. And it's going to be... Oh, God, which one is it? It's the Charisma one. Uh, Eagle Splendor, I think is what it is. Okay, and what does that do? 
it gives me advantage on charisma checks. So anything charisma based for the next hour. Okay. Yeah. So the four of you, the five of you, uh, follow Amri down to where the captain's quarters, and you are all immediately hit with your uh, familiar sense as the door slowly starts to open, and Amri goes, uh, your uh, meeting has arrived, and um, <clears throat> as the five of you start to walk, uh, she puts a hand on your chest on her and goes, you wanted to speak with her personally first? Uh, yeah, that, your would, case? that would be correct. Yes, ma'am. And she kind of like looks behind her, and you see her kind of move past before she closes the door behind you, and Amari is in the uh, hallway with the other four. As you are in <clears throat> Captain's Creed's quarters once again, and you see that uh, things have shifted around every so often. You have seen that some of the maps that she had on her desk have now been pinned up, and she is in her full captain gear she has a, her full coat her petticoat in her hair is draped to her sides and she currently has her arms crossed before she turns and looks back around and she has that silvery kind of uh eyes leering back at you as she doesn't say anything and i'll uh i'll bow my head i'll say captain good morning she looks at you so, I feel it's only prevalent that I take the full brunt of whatever it is you have planned for us. I knew Thok was on board. I knew he was coming, and I knew that you guys had had some... a checkered past, if you will. It was information I withheld... And that's my fault. And I apologize. Let's be honest. Those three other members of my party out there are idiots. And they didn't know any better. I apologize again. And I just wanted to let you know that I understand the position that this puts you in. It's not a favorable one, but we would be willing to do whatever it takes to make amends, clear his debt, and get off on the right foot because this is your ship and you will determine whatever it is that happens between us from this point forward. But he did save Aldana. He did get us to the ship. And he has her best interest and our best interest at heart. He is a close personal friend of mine. And I will stand by his side, whatever it is you choose. And she takes a moment and she goes, Valdana is more than a cousin to me. We had grown up together. We were raised together. She is a stronger connection of blood than I ever will know. And for some reason, in her head, she thinks that you are this massively important person. That you are almost like beyond our understanding and comprehension that you have come from her dreams and have walked in front of her like some kind of dream god. And I have spoken with gods and they do not sound like you. And you see her in the steely reserve kind of just drops and... What the captain has done to me is more than money, more than gold. This is resources for our ship, for my girls, for me, for Val. Food, clothing, protection. Gone because he made a decision. 
on a whim because he's an idiot, as you put. And now I swore with him if I were to ever see him again, I would run my sword through his sternum. And now you have come here, Mr. Dreamy, to not kill him, to not remember the pain that he caused me and my family. I don't kill him, what is it? In, what's in it for me? Captain, I can't, I, I can't promise you that I was sent here by some god. I can't promise you that I can even do what it is Valdana thinks I can. I think she has more faith in me than I do. But I do believe in fate. I do believe that things happen for a reason. And I think we were brought here, Thok included, for a purpose. I don't know what that purpose is with you yet, but if you indulge me for a moment, I'd like to show you why I've I feel that way. I'll reach into my bag and I'll pull out my music box. Yes, I heard you had run into Vendron. In a place as big as this plane is, the fact that we both have met this wonderful woman and have one of these from her means a lot. You say you do this for family and he took food off of your family's table and clothes off their back and protection from them. Well, we are here. We can be protection. We can produce food. And he's helping me find my family. An eye for an eye means the whole world is blind. Captain Bloodshed will not solve this. And if you choose to run your sword through his sternum, then that is your choice. And your choice alone. But I will defend him. And I want you to know that. And it's not because I like him better than you or there is... He's made an oath to me and I to him. And I, if anyone can respect that, I think it would be you. And she looks at the box and she looks at you and she goes, will you indulge me for a second? Of course. And please try not to fight it or I will know. And you see her and she concentrate as you kind of feel this wave hit you as you were compelled unless you would like to make the save for it no nope. compelled to to tell the truth and she goes okay did you hurt vindrin no we love vindrin love her and we would do anything for her how did she look Old, but strong. It was kind of crazy. She had Thok sit on her leg. It was the most insane thing I've ever... I didn't get to see it, but I heard it. He fought her. He, he fought her to, to like... He was like, I'm not going to do it. And she was like, you're going to do it. And then he did. She tends to do that. I've noticed. So... And she looks a little bit like closer and... She's she kind of goes around the desk and you're almost like nose to nose as she examines your eyes and she goes at any point with Vindran, did she show her you her face? Her face? Your reaction would say no. No, I guess. I mean, I saw her and she steps back and she goes and she I'm assuming had all of you sit on her knee. Oh, yeah. And she made you a chair. Yep. 
It's probably the nicest chair I've ever seen. And she looks back over at her her desk chair and she kind of smiles and she goes, yeah. Okay. I'm convinced with you and your cause. However, I'm sure your compatriots had some other things they would like to say as well. Oh, um, I'm sure the idiots do. And that's why I kind of wanted to come in here first. Mm. One-on-one and get to discuss with you. But they're going to say what they're going to say. And the fallout will be ours. We share in all the glory and all the blame. She goes, very honorable. Stupid. Honorable. I've been called worse. I'm sure you have. As she kind of walks uh, forward, and what are you four doing, or you three doing outside uh, the door as Donner goes in? Tapping my foot Just, uh, Biding my time. Yeah. <laughs> I would, uh, I, I'd be meditating near the door, uh, which is a thinly veiled ruse to be able to hear what's going on inside. Okay. Go ahead and roll a uh, investigation check at disadvantage for me because there's a giant oak door. Investigation. All there's going, I'll miss you, boat. (laughs) I'll miss you, floor. (laughs) Uh, Modded 20. Modded 20. You hear bits and pieces. You hear uh, the different vocal ranges. You do hear that eventually the captain does talk to Donna and her tone doesn't raise. Uh, so you do seem that it might be going well. It doesn't sound like she's yelled at him, and you don't hear any scuffling, so she hasn't tried to kill him. Before, uh, the weight of the door kind of moves, uh, back from you as the door opens as Creed is there, uh, and you kind of stumble back, and you kind of hit your head on the floor, and you look up, and she's looking down at you, and... She goes, looks into the hallway. I'm ready for the rest of you now. Thank you, Amri. And you see her and Amri bows before leaving. Val, would you close the door when everyone comes in? And you see her and she's like, yeah, yeah, no, got it. And she slowly walks over. Donner is still in his armor. It doesn't look like he's been harmed in any way. And she goes behind her desk and you see her. And she puts her hand on her sword hilt. Uh, just you've seen it before, Donner. It's just this very ornate handle of a great sword. As she sits down, and you see her put her hand on it, where she goes, "Well, your comrade here has uh, explained to an extent your situation, but I am curious. I wanted to hear it from the horse's ass, so to speak." As she makes eye contact with you, Thok. I'm standing up straight, hands behind my back, head held high. So, Captain Morning Light, it's... mm, I've wanted you in my office and in my quarters for a very long time, as you probably would realize. Captain Creed, are you happy? So... Your friend here tells me that you are assisting him with finding his family. And apparently this island, as she looks over at Val, who is just boring holes into the floor, happens to be a key to that, as Valdana has simply explained to me. Now, my question is, Captain, how you found yourself here? in this particular spot, with this particular lot. Unless, forgive me, and she looks over at Dremel, Tribrin has grown quite a bit since the last I saw him, and a little more bovine. It was definitely a series of events that were outside of my control that only the gods could really tell. A lot of things happened, and um, it was not my intent to end up on your ship, but here we are. Um, It was already too late 
by the time that I figured out which ship it was. Um, so it is my apologies for not bringing you sooner and letting you know I was coming. <laughs> no. um, knowing what you know and knowing what I know, if you were to come back onto the ship, say you could do that day all <clears> over, <throat> would you come back and make this mistake again? As she looks back over at Donner and then Valdana. I s- back to you. straight up look at her straight in the eye and I was like, yes, I would. And it's not for the reasons that you think. I did not take the money for myself. This was something that was needed for the town that the money was taken from. And the way that, oh, I don't know that part. Never mind. I almost met it. It's okay. And she goes, well, despite it being nobly that you returned this stolen money, I am owed money as well and now i am also going out of my way to fulfill your interest and my cousin's interest which she has been going on about since we were 12 which i only took as ramblings so let's start strike a bargain yes i'm a woman Agreed. in business I'm, so yes please then you are correct you are owed money, and it is on my behalf that you are owed this money. So my proposition for you to pay back the money that was taken from you all those years ago, anything that the horizon earns while it's afloat, you will make 5% in perpetuity. Right, but if it's going to come back, is what I'm saying. Like, I currently just yes, have a is. network error. Is it back now? Stream, can I hear myself? Yes, it's back now. Hi, world. Sorry. Hey, what's up? So, Sorry as far that, as guys. I'm aware, the last thing that was said was in perpetuity, which was actually a really awesome cliffhanger <laughs> that only I got to experience. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, because this has gone so well, actually. Because <laughs> right. they kept going for a little bit. Yeah, so the end, yeah, in perpetuity would be the last part uh, that I'm aware of. So I would pick it up from there. And we'll see oh, it. If you'd like to recap what your deal was going to be. Uh, my deal was uh, for paying back the money that I took from her those years ago it was she would earn five percent of whatever the horizon would make um in perpetuity as long as the horizon's afloat um whether that be again if it's 50 years it's 50 years whatever we make she earns five percent um and uh in uh as an insurance policy so that who's to say i don't sink my own ship and the deal is canceled I owe her a favor, uh, no cost at any given uh, at any time. One favor, uh, me and my crew. Yep. To which she agreed to the terms, and that she would be writing up a contract. And of course, you may review said contract before signing. Make sure that everything is square. Of course. Now to the favor one of the favors i must ask of you in a different contract oh please first my question for you is have you ever been in love and she kind of looks off and she goes not in the romantic sense, no. However, as a worshiper of soon, you understand love. Some would say love is my business, yes. So you know that some people would do 
things that could potentially get them skewered through the sternum to potentially reconnect with the one they love. Mm -hmm. And we do stupid things for those who we love. And my favor I was going to ask is once we are done with Donner Donner's quest, if there's any way that you can find it in your heart and in your faith to reconnect me with the one I love. How? A rendezvous point. We just... Where? It is unknown as of now. Um, I'm still currently in talks with uh, Sue. She's... I know. My apologies. But <clears throat> once we're done with Donner's business, we can find if it's somewhere of your choosing, so be it. And after that, you need not to ever see me except for our payoffs and your favor. Wow. <clears throat> you have 72 hours before we get to the island. In that 72 hours, you will find me this rendezvous point, and then, depending on where it is, I may or may not agree on it. Understand? Understood. Anyone else have any favors they'd like to ask the... Oh, gracious, Captain. I'm feeling very generous at the moment. I do just have uh, a, a general question. Yes. Uh, about how many days travel do you think we have left before we get to the island? 72. 72 hours. Oh, I thought that was out of game. I thought that was just how much time she was giving Thak. No, it's 72 hours to the island, and by then I have to give her a rendezvous point. Got Correct. It. For afterwards. And she looks over at Alda. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say that... Uh, uh, when we got here, I didn't know that this was going to be uh, the ship that we would be riding, so I do want to apologize to you um, and as well to Brock uh, again for giving a fake name when I arrived. Uh, due to some past circumstances, uh, it felt like it was the right idea, but uh, not knowing we'd be traveling. So with, with you, uh, I just want to apologize for that. I think that uh, after talking with Donna earlier, I think that I at least owe you that much, so I apologize. And she nods. And then she looks over at you, Dremel. Anything you'd like to ask of me? Captain, I, I think I said everything that I wanted to say and gave you my request in the letter that I trust you've read. I then I will leave it at that. Very good. So, please, you may leave. I have to charter us towards the Isle of Storms now. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. 72 hours. Morning light. Will do. Um, do you have maps of the area by chance? I know. And I don't know this area as much as you do. I do. And she uh, <clears throat> shows you from her wall. Let me pull up the map. Make sure this is the right one. Because I have a few. Ooh, visuals. No, nah, not that crazy. <laughs> I just have that's to. A, that's a little thump thump. Hey, that's pretty good. So I will just do a nice uh, reveal for you so that way you have it. And then I'll do leave you want to show this on camera? If you'd like, you can. Give me one moment. I'm just. Got to see it, people. <laughs> it's Dude. about to go down. Here it comes. I 
Ay, Dios it's mío. trees. <laughs> Hold on, there's more. There you go. And uh, <clears throat> she pulls down the map and she goes, your, uh, your island is said to be somewhere in this location. Ah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Somehow it took oh. me totally out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like looking at the stream. I was like, oh, God. He's been teleported to the island. <laughs> I, was oh, trying no. to, I was trying to zoom out. And for some reason, it's like, nope, fuck you backwards. <laughs> I also need to zoom. Well, I can't. Yeah. Is there like an island I should be able to see? Yeah, that's no. what I was going to ask. Not yet. Okay. I I yeah, where did you point at it, at it as fuck a direction again? for where it is? So it is. Did you get kicked out again? Yeah. It's south. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's south. Right. Guess I just can't zoom out too far without it trying to take me back. Anyway, she goes. If there is anything else that you can think of, please hesitate to ask. Understood, Captain. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sorry, I refreshed. And so the five of you have exited the captain's chambers. So you all have 72 hours to get things that you would like completed, completed. So I'm going to give you that time, of course, but I figured we still have 20 more minutes of the session. So I figured if you had things to discuss to do so when you left. Anything else you guys like to do in the captain's court? Get the fuck out of there as fast as we can. Okay. You guys macaroni and cheese it out. I, I would like on the way out to turn around, try to make eye contact with her. Um, I, I sent you just in the request that I had for her. Oh. Um, I just want to know, I want to see if I get any sort of indication how well she took that request. And she, you look at her and she goes, 8 o'clock. And uh, I try to hide a smile, nod, and uh, continue out with the party. And she smirks and she goes out. So the five of you eventually make it to the top of the of the deck where the crow's nest is as you reconvene. So what's going on, guys? Uh, I personally... I am done. Done. So, so if we wrap early, we wrap early. Yeah, the only other thing that I'll be doing during this time is just trying to get close to the water, as like as close to the water as I can see. I don't know if there's any like windows from lower decks or anything like that, uh, just to try and observe um, sea life uh, for potential wild shape and summoning purposes to just see new species from uh, mm -hmm. the ocean that I haven't seen before. So. Okay. And we'll we'll break into that a little bit more. Yeah, I need yeah, to I'm go sure. over it with you. Um, but <clears throat> as you guys are slowly drifting off, eventually, Alder, you kind of look at the side of the, the ship and you see this very large mass under the water that kind of peaks up as the spout just kind of wets on the side of the, uh, the ship all the way onto the deck as eventually the other three kind of look over as you see this massive whale almost going with the ship like it's traveling with it as we will end it with that. Oh, whale Lord. Whale Lord. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Whaler was an early one. We're finishing off a little early this Started evening. Started early. Thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight, watching another episode yeah. of dungeons and dragons and junk drawer. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed. We hope you had time. We sure did. Um, Josh, would you like to read some names? Well, golly gee, I sure would. Gonna say a big old thank you to, of course, our moderators, JVelez1199 and Mike from Florida, and another TV viewer, Atten, Devilin07, for you fetishes out there, Feet, Gandalf the Babe, and Lurks. Thank you for watching. We love you all. Good night, guys. See ya.